Perfect. Okay, so my name is Bain Craft. I am an assistant professor of psychology and biology at Seattle Pacific University. And uh, I'm going to talk about Camtasia and how I used it both uh, in traditional and or traditional being face-to-face and a, your regular old classroom setting and also for online classrooms. And just to kind of begin this, to say it's really changed the way I, I, I teach. I mean, both in class as well as online. I mean, completely, I mean, other than maybe PowerPoint and being able to use PowerPoint, I can't think of any other technology that's dramatically changed the way I teach uh, so much as, as Camtasia. So I uh, developed a couple of online classes for SBU recently, um, and in doing that, one of my goals was to make uh, the class uh, relational to where I wouldn't lose some aspect of the, the traditional face-to-face kind of classroom perspective, that there would still be a professor there with, that had a voice, and you know that students could potentially get some indication that there's somebody out there. I'm not just posting text online that they have to go and, and access, or they're just taking quizzes, that there's somebody there as a human being uh, in this online classroom. My second goal was to create lectures that were interactive to some degree, to where I could, could actually provide students with content, and they could watch that content or listen to that content, and then email me questions or ask me questions about that content. And then also provide examples or, or to give demonstrations of problems that were engaging and hopefully memorable. So by you know, talking through a specific classic psychology study, uh, I give them an example of what that might look like, but it's more than them just actually reading that in their text. It's me dialoguing potentially with them about that example or that problem. So these were my goals in, in developing uh, these online classes for our psychology department. There are two classes that I developed. One was an uh, introduction to statistics for the social and behavioral sciences. So just a regular intro stats course with a, a psychology bent to it. And then also uh, a general psychology class. So kind of an introduction to psychology. And the teaching tools that I used here were screen capture for my lectures for both of these courses. So I would screen capture. I would try to, to make them about 20-minute chunks um, and I would screen capture about 20 minute chunks of lecture material for both of the classes. And then I would provide kind of supplements, uh, examples. So say, for example, for my, my intro stats course, you know, for working through this problem, I could show them how to work it in SPSS, uh, the statistical package for social sciences. Or I could show them maybe how to work it by hand or something like that uh, by using a calculator on my screen or something. Um, so I'm going to give you an example of one of the screen captures that I made for uh, lecturing my, in my intro stats course. And just to be aware, I, I have a southern accent, and, and that kind of comes through at times in, in my presentation. <laughs> I forewarn students of kind of what David was mentioning, that you know these are really kind of sometimes on the fly. It's me talking through PowerPoint slides or giving this presentation. And there's some things that happen. Uh, there's definitely my accent that's going to be in there. So I kind of forewarn them of that. So this is uh, an example of that. So I'm going to skip to about right here. question remains, though, even though we can describe these relationships either using a correlation coefficient or taking a look at a scatter plot. Is our correlation coefficient something that's statistically significant? Is it something that is really rare or uncommon? Or is it something that's pretty common? So as before, whenever So this gives me the opportunity to actually kind of talk through some of our dialogue potentially with students about whatever lecture content it is that I'm presenting. Um, so, here's some student responses to my intro stats course, what they thought about the screen captures. Uh, one student said, because I'm a visual learner and like to see the steps necessary to complete math problems, the screen capture was very helpful for me in class. I mean, that's perfect. You've got a student who is saying that I'm a visual learner, and being able to watch these videos and, and kind of listen to your lecture helped me learn that content. That's, that's brilliant for an online class. Uh, another student said, I have a lot of trouble when I, I don't have one-on-one -on -one learning. The screen capture definitely helped, though. It, 
it just took some time getting used to it since it was new to me. So just getting used to being able to play that video and, and kind of go back and take a look at it and where to access it, maybe on Blackboard or iTunes U or wherever I was presenting that information. Um, another student said, I thought it was extremely beneficial. It allowed the professor to interact with us online beyond just talking. I'm a visual learner, so presentations really helped me when he uh, would write or draw on the screen. So I actually had a tablet PC, so as I was lecturing through, I could write or draw on the screen, and the Camtasia is actually capturing that. So that was kind of an added feature to, to what I was doing. And of course, you had some students, basically, the students said, I had no idea what the screen capture technology was, maybe because they didn't watch it. So that happens. Um, for my general psychology class, where I was also uh, creating lectures, kind of these little mini lectures and posting those, here's some student responses from that online course. So I thought it, uh, that it was very helpful and made it like the professor was giving a live lecture. I mean, wow, if you're sitting at home taking an online class and you perceive this experience as being like a live lecture, how much more effective is your online class at that point? Um, it was beneficial because it reminded me of a normal lecture. Again, kind of giving you the sense that it's this, this relational aspect that you might have in a traditional face-to-face -face, uh, environment where a professor might have a PowerPoint set up. If you're a visual learner like myself, it, that is extraordinarily helpful. Uh, and, of course, you had some students, again, that said, I did not notice the screen capture technology uh, due to the fact that I rarely watch the lectures. Well, that's kind of a problem. You can't force them to watch this stuff. Um, so in addition to developing an online class and using screen capture technology in that uh, kind of medium, I've also used it uh, as a means by which to supplement what I was doing in traditional face-to-face -face classes. And really, this is, this is not... Um, this is really just me kind of web enhancing my course. So we meet traditionally face to face three times a week, but it provides me with the opportunity to kind of post some additional examples of problems uh, to maybe uh, enhance anything that I'm doing in the classroom. Um, so it, it gives me this example, or, or to provide students with additional information or examples outside of class. It's useful for me especially uh, whenever I have students that have a lot of questions about the same topic. I can take five minutes, and as opposed to you know, taking the, the hour that it might take to reply to 50 emails, I can take five minutes and create a screen capture, post it on Blackboard, and tell students to go and watch it, and that answers their question. And they can watch it one time or 50 times. It's brilliant. Um, so I developed this uh, in particular to enhance my uh, advanced statistics course. So I teach an advanced statistics for social and behavioral sciences. And in that course, I'm teaching them to use a couple of different uh, ways in which to analyze data, so like Excel and SPSS. So we'll do that in class. I'll show them how to work it by hand. I'll show them how to work it in Excel. I'll show them how to work it in SPSS in class. But that's a lot of content to take in in one class. Um, I mean, even if students are at the level where they're doing advanced statistics, that's still a lot to deal with. So if I can post additional kind of problems or examples online, maybe the ones from the homework in the book, uh, I can post those online and they can go watch them anytime. They can go back and review some of those if maybe they missed a portion of that lecture or happened to zone out or whatever the case might be. Maybe they didn't understand what I was talking about, which is potentially likely. Um, so some of the teaching tools that I, I was using was the screen capture technology, and I was specifically capturing uh, examples that I was providing outside of just the ones that I was giving in class. So here's a demonstration of a lab assignment. Students had to complete a lab assignment where they would, I would give them a little scenario where they're maybe analyzing um, you know, differences in child development or something like that. And then I would actually work through that uh, and post this lec this problem or example online, uh, and it's something extra that I didn't talk about in class, and it allowed them to go and kind of watch and practice that outside of class. So let's see. So here we're talking about how to do a, a problem in Excel. This is example where we're looking at the aggressive behavior of kids whenever they're with their parents, when they're with teachers, and when they're alone. And this is 
is a repeated measures test. Remember, the Friedman's ANOVA is similar to our Wilcox and T test, where we're looking at repeated measures or paired samples, but we're looking at. So, just kind of giving you a glimpse of how I can take this content uh, and actually supplement my traditional face-to-face -face lectures. So, hopefully, a student has have questions, maybe didn't understand problems. They now have all of these examples online, and maybe I, that makes my time more efficient. I don't have to meet with them as much maybe in, in office hours, or I don't have to write all of these emails and reply. They can go and watch this video a thousand times, and that's perfectly fine. So uh, for the traditional class, this advanced stats course, I've been doing this for actually a couple of years at this point. So here are a couple of responses uh, to the screen capture use within uh, the advanced stats course. Um, I also like the screen captures. They went over how to run tests in the various programs. I actually somewhat liked the lab assignments. I don't know why. I mean, <laughs> hopefully you like them because now you understand how to do them. You understand how to use statistics because you've got all of these examples of how to do these problems in a variety of formats. Hopefully that screen capture technology has provided the means by which that students actually like to use and, and kind of perform statistical techniques. Success. That's brilliant. Um, so uh, working through examples uh, in both SPSS and Excel, having the screen capture videos available for me uh, for study time on my own was beneficial for students. Uh, being able to watch the screencast outside of class helped a lot when I was studying and using both Excel and SPSS helped me uh, learn the material better. So that, I, that idea that whenever they are studying and they don't have the opportunity to kind of you know, engage you face to face, they can go back onto Blackboard or iTunes U and actually watch you perform this problem again or maybe a section of the lecture that you screen captured. So it provides them a, a study tool really that is hopefully benef benefiting them whenever they're actually going to take a test or complete an, uh, an assessment. A couple of suggestions that I might have or kind of things that I would like to see happen with screen capture. One is, is the editing function. So David mentioned in the beginning that you can kind of trim the beginning and end of your screen capture. Uh, and it's super easy, it's super quick to create a lecture, to start recording it, and to kind of trim the beginning and the end. But it would be super nice if at the same time you could maybe trim a section in the middle. Uh, and that'd be just really an easy kind of quick thing to cut out. So maybe say for example, Sometimes if I'm in my office, my phone will ring and I'm in the middle of or, or just ending you know, a 20-minute segment. I'm like, ah, no, now I've got to record this again. Or I quickly pause it or something. It'd be great to be able to just cut one little chunk out and then go on ahead and send that uh, to be published. The second would be um, some students have reported uh, access issues, and I kind of mentioned one of those, those issues. And that, that being, I think, more kind of not an issue with Camtasia or TechSmith, uh, rather maybe with our IT department and just getting students used to using like I, iTunes U or, or being able to access some of this content. So I think that that might be something that I as well as IT maybe needs to work with and just getting students up to date and hey I can access this, this material 